Yo, what's up, everybody? This your boy Puda checking in. Talk that talk on B100 Radio. I'm with one of my idols, Angelie. How you doing, Miss Yee? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, you know, um, I wanted to just get right into it. So, you know, I did my research on you. You started off at Wesleyan University, writer, right? I was English major in, in English. college, yeah. So, once you started off writing, then you started to intern uh, under the Wu-Tang. So, how did you make that transition of, you know, an English major to the love of music? Well, I think I've always loved music. Like, I grew up loving music. I think everybody can tell you they love music, whatever genre it is, because it brings such, you know, memories of when something happened. There are certain songs you always think of, like, oh, this song makes me think of when I grew up. This song makes me think of breaking up with my boyfriend. So everybody loves music for whatever reason that they love it for. Um, but, you know, I really was an English major. And even in college, though, I did a lot of shows and everything. Like, I would bring artists to campus to perform. So I was always, like, kind of somewhat into it more than the average person. Okay, so from there, from the music, you got your first opportunity on the radio and a serious radio in 2005 on the Cypher, the Cypher Sounds Effect. Mm -hmm. So walk me through that moment how you got your first radio personality opportunity. Well, I was actually doing marketing before that. I worked for Eminem for his clothing line and I hit up his manager and I said, I would love to do marketing, marketing at Sirius Satellite Radio. So he told me, well, we're looking for a female for the morning show. You can try out for that if you want, you know, and he was like, I have no say in whether or not they're going to actually hire you, mm -hmm. but, you know, see what happens. So I went up to the station and I had my interview. I didn't have any experience in radio, mm -hmm. but I stayed for like a month working, not getting paid, just, you know, auditioning mm -hmm. basically. And eventually they did hire me. Okay. So, um, so from, from there on, when... Uh, what I always wanted to know my personal self when you when y'all were called to be a part of the breakfast club Did you and Envy had any like doubts that like this would work because of Charlemagne's previous history of Stance of getting fired getting into it being so controversial. Like, did you guys had that any doubts? I think that you can't go into something like that with doubts mm -hmm. You know you always have to be positive and think like this is gonna be the greatest thing ever I think for all of us we had no idea what was going to happen. I, I know Envy had doubts about me because I was coming from satellite radio and I had never done FM radio before and we were allowed to curse. We didn't have, you know, time talk breaks. We didn't have any advertising. So they looked at me like, man, is Angela going to be able to, you know, tone it down for regular radio? For Charlemagne, you know, we, none of us had either ever worked with him before, so we didn't know what that was going to be like, you know, and for Envy, we, like, none of us knew what mm -hmm. was going to happen. So I think it was just a matter of us just trying to come together and, and work it out. But we all got along with each other. So that was important. At least we knew each other. You know, we had chemistry with each other. We all had done. I had worked with Envy on the radio before. We both worked at Satellite. Mm -hmm. Envy had co-hosted my show with me a couple of times. And Charlamagne had co-hosted with me a couple of times. So we all knew each other. So with you, I would say your character on The Breakfast Club, like, you're like the... <laughs> Let's see, you like to go in people hard, go and dig in for the information and stuff. Y'all you, you, have some great interviews. How do you prepare like for some of the interviews as far as like Jay-Z, Spike Lee, P. Diddy? How do y'all prepare for that stuff? Well, I think for myself, like every day I'm always um, doing the rumor report and news and everything. So a lot of stuff I already just kind of know because every day I'm looking stuff up online. Whether or not I report it, you know, at least I have it always in my head. So there's certain things that I've always wanted to know and you know I can guarantee you if there's something that you want to know other people want to know it also. And then it's just a matter of going back and reading and watching previous interviews by somebody and just kind of going a little bit deeper than they've gone before. Okay so um, with some of the slander that Charlemagne says uh, to the, the public figures from athletes <clears throat> to celebrities like does, does that like affect your relationship with that person as well? Like, let's say if you're just saying something about Drake or Nicki Minaj or something like that, does like that relationship with Nicki Minaj and yourself, does that affect because of what he says? Well, yeah, I think it always affects us as, you know, people look at it like, well, he's on the show with you and if he says something, they look at it as like, we all said it mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, we all have different opinions. There's things that I think that they don't agree with. There's things that they think that I don't agree with. 
but I do feel like artists look at it as like the breakfast club said it, mm -hmm. you know, so it does affect you where, you know, sometimes people might have used to say what's up to you and now they don't, or there's people that you'll never get an interview with or things like that of that nature, but I mean, you know, what can I do? It's not like I'm going to say... I, and I tell people, and I tell Charlamagne, and I say it on the air, Envy, whatever, I'll be like, listen, just because you said it don't mean I think it. I just want to mm. make that clear. But it doesn't matter. People don't look at it like that. They just look at it like, I'm never doing anything with the Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, some of the moments that um, that I've seen when uh, Charlie, Charlie Baltimore came on the show, and I guess... Um, they wanted to be funny. They booked Char uh, Charlie Baltimore and Little Kim, and you was like kind of upset. I wanted to see. I want to know like, <laughs> were you really upset like uh, over that stuff, or the time like when um, Charlemagne was dissing? Y'all had like a webisode video where he was dissing P Diddy's music, and he was wearing all Dirty Money stuff. Like, were you guys like really actually? actually upset of, about certain stuff like that. But those are more like skits, so okay. it's exaggerated. But I don't I wasn't upset about Charlie Baltimore and Little Kim being there at the same time, but I do feel like, you know, when people book things they have to make sure I don't think people knew. Like mm -hmm. whoever booked the interviews what wasn't thinking like, oh this person doesn't get along with this person. They have sometimes people really don't have any idea. So mm -hmm. it's just something to be aware of. And with um Charlemagne with the whole Diddy situation it just was, you know, that was kind of a joke. He mm -hmm. was saying he didn't like Diddy's music, Diddy got upset, then Diddy ended up doing what I think is the best thing to do, which is coming on the show and handling the situation. Diddy's really great at handling himself, and, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what, it's Diddy. Like, you're not going to be disrespectful. It's Diddy. He's done a lot, you know, for hip-hop and everything, and, you know, for he has The Rock, he has, um, <laughs> he has Revolt TV, mm -hmm. he has everything. So, to a certain degree, he's a great businessman, and in order to be the great businessman that he is, he was able to come on and have a sense of humor about the whole situation, and Charlamagne was able to do the same, and, you know, it just shows how Charlamagne went from saying one thing, then Diddy came on the show, checked him, and now he's a supporter. Okay, so, like, some of y'all, I, I like a lot of you guys' interviews, but I like the most awkward ones. Like, when DJ Drama was, um, I guess they had a light skin moment, or when Charlamagne was trying to question Natalie Nunn's talent, or y'all made, well, not y'all, but Charlamagne made Little Mama cry, like, uh, and also the, um, when y'all was saying uh, Seven Skeeter for um, Seven Streeter and stuff like that, that was some of my uh, most my best um, interviews that I like. What are some of your best uh, interviews that you you look back and did? Well, I love when Webby comes up and we interview him. I think he's hilarious. Um, also, Gucci Mane. I think that was a pretty funny like interview, that and that was an awkward one as well. Um, I also like interviews where we learn something. Like, I always feel like when uh, Fifty Cent came up there, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of times. Those are pretty good. Um, just people that I look at as legendary, I guess, when they come on the show, it's always like, wow, I can't believe I'm sitting here, you know, talking mm -hmm. to Jay-Z or talking to people like that. So, those are always good ones for me. But, you know, we'll always love the Ray J interview. I think mm -hmm. that's probably, like, the best interview mm -hmm. ever where he, he called. And foreigners aren't normally that great. Yeah. But, you know, being that he wasn't even there live, that was um, a pretty good one. You know, just a, a, a lot of those. Like, just people... Uh, you know, reality show star interviews are pretty good, too, because they turn up on purpose. So, you yeah, know, I think it's always good when people can be very open. Mm. So what do you think is the state <clears throat> of women in radio? Because you have like yourself, uh, Wendy Williams, Nessa, Angie Martinez. What do you think the like the state? Because it's very few, You, uh, um, I would say. How, um, so what do you think the state of and the radio and business of women? Well, I think there's a lot of women. It's just regional. So sometimes if you're not from an area, like, you might not know mm -hmm. who somebody is. I've met a lot of people just, you know, from being on different stations in different markets who I never met before. You know, because I wouldn't know if I don't live in Norfolk. I'm not going to know all the radio personalities there. So there's a lot of women. You know, obviously, Wendy doesn't do radio anymore. But, yeah, like, Angie Martinez is great working with her now at Power. Mm -hmm. That's somebody I always looked up to growing up. Uh, Debbie Dev, who's in Houston, you know, I think she's great. And um, just, I've met so many different women in radio. Kay Fox is on in Miami. And um, my girl Roxy, she's on in Miami also. Just a lot of people. We have a great network of people now. People I've met in New Orleans, just everywhere. So it is, I think, a very regional thing. It's not, 
because we're syndicated, I think, you know, obviously a lot more people know who we are. And I think morning shows, too. A lot more people are familiar with morning shows. So it is what it is. But there's a lot of people, I think, on the come up. Somebody was asking me the other day, like, about different women in radio and different opportunities. There's my girl, Sarah Vivon, who works here on 94 yeah, Five Streets. Yeah, six. there's a lot of women. Okay, so, you know, y'all have a lot of different segments on the show um y'all used to have the freezer i want to i wanted to know what happened to that um <laughs> the, uh, i love the sneaker vlog you know but what to ask you do you like when you when these some of these people call up and it's a two-part question if some of these people call up do you take that own advice that you did show <clears throat> So in your life? Well, I think that um, we all know what we're supposed to do in certain situations. And sometimes when you're in the middle of a situation, you it's hard to remove yourself from it and take practical advice. I think we all have that issue. So I might be in the middle of something and, and you always make excuses for somebody else or, you know, you kind of want somebody to tell you what you want to hear. But sometimes what you need is for somebody to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to tell yourself the truth sometimes. So... I think I am a very practical person, but I also have patience with myself. I know that I'm not perfect. I'm not going to always do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that's important, too. And I tell my friends that all the time. You know what you're supposed to do? It's just hard to do it. Like, one of my friends has been in this relationship with a guy for, you know, um, years now. Mm -hmm. And it's so obvious that they're not going to end up together. And I just think people end up breaking up. You know, it's easy to say, okay, we're not going to be together. Y'all, You need to let it go. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole different thing to actually do it. So I think you just have to understand that. And, you know, I tell people if you're going to complain about something every single day and not do anything different about it, then just stop complaining about it. Yeah. So with the, I like the decision as well. First, I got there's two questions <clears throat> to the decision. What is what was the most cra what was the most craziest the decision? that was on the show and is that because a lot of people I look at the you I go back on the YouTubes and stuff because obviously I can't get up at six to listen to the show sometimes so, like, but um, when I'm going mm -hmm. back the to things the things people argue over and but you know sometimes real life issues seem fake sometimes you look back at things and you're like what the hell was I thinking you know so but yeah the craziest ones are always when people physically get into it and so what was the one that you think that was like, yo, this is so crazy. Like, I can't believe this just happened. Well, you know, this one that I got suspended for where the two guys started fighting over. <laughs> they try to act like it's my fault because, you know, they're like, oh, Angela, the decision is your thing. But it's really not. Like, mm -hmm. Shalamine and Envy love to instigate. I really be trying to help when we do the decision. Mm -hmm. Like, I really try to help, but they really don't. They just want to hear the drama, so. I thought the craziest one was when the guy, I guess he was stalking you or something like oh that. Oh, my God. And you know what? I told them that's not funny because I really do have people that a couple of different situations where people were waiting outside the job and everything. And, you know, I get letters. I get crazy emails. I get all kind of stuff. So it's not something that I think that you could take too lightly and joke about. Mm. So I want to switch over um, to management. Do you still like manage artists such as J Electronica or L'Oreal? Uh, no, I haven't been doing artist management just because, like, for myself, I've been working seven days a week and doing a lot. And being a manager means, like, putting somebody's life in front of yours, mm -hmm. which I think to be a great manager, you really have to do that. You really have to be, like, what I have to do is not as important as what I have to do for this person. And that is part of being a great manager, and I can't do that right now because I kind of manage myself. So I have to be a little more selfish now and do what I have to do for myself, and I would hate to have somebody's life in my hands and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm. So the reality, like when you was on a reality show, um, well, I forgot what was it called, it was on oh, VH1, Gossip, Game. Gossip Game. Did the reality TV help you or it, it, or it tried to affect you in a way? I think that it didn't hurt me because I didn't do anything out of character mm -hmm. so much, but um, I wouldn't say that it necessarily affected anything because it's not like I didn't have a lot of drama on there. You know, it is what it is. It's like, to me, and I told them from the beginning, this is not my number one priority. This is like, my number one priority is my job that I have to do in the morning mm -hmm. and everything around, surrounding that. And then, you know, the worst part of it, I think, was that it was very time consuming mm -hmm. as far as filming. So a lot of stuff that I had to do, I was just always exhausted. Mm. So 
Mount Rushmore. Um, I, I I was listening to you guys. You guys were talking about Mount Rushmore. Well, Charlamagne and Envy was talking about Mount Rushmore basketball. But like my Mount Rushmore of radio would consist of The Breakfast Club, um, Cosmic Kev, DJ <coughs> Ski, um, let's see, Tim Westwood, Howard Stern, and also Big Boy on the West Coast. What is who are on your Mount Rushmore of radio? Well, of course, always, you know, Wendy Williams mm -hmm. and um, Angie Martinez. Mm -hmm. And then I have always liked Howard Stern also. I think everybody has to respect where he came from and how he really kind of um, raped the whole radio industry mm -hmm. and got what he got out of it. Um, and there's a lot of people, not necessarily just in radio, but other people like Chelsea Handler that I really enjoy and Chris Rock that I look up to. And just anybody that kind of handles their own business, produces their own stuff. You know, there's a lot of other people in other genres of radio that we really look up to also. Oh. Not just um, urban. So there's a lot of people that, well, and you know, Howard Stern obviously isn't just mm -hmm. urban either. But there's a lot of other um, personalities that, even being part of the whole iHeartRadio conglomerate, we can look at like, you know, people that are on, like Elvis Duran on Z100, mm -hmm. who's had like a super long run in radio and still going strong and still putting up numbers and still number one. That's a huge deal. Like, I grew up listening to him, and he's still on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's um, Pop. Or Ryan Seacrest, who does he's everything. Smiling. He's from here. Right. So, you know, it's just a lot of, of different people. Steve Harvey, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, who didn't really get it pop until he was in his late 30s. Mm -hmm. So, what is next for you? Like, you got a lot of stuff going on. So, like, what is next that you're trying to take on? Well, you know, I just started doing my lip service podcast. So... That is something I'm going to start doing it every single week. I just was getting it together, but now um, that's going to start in a couple of weeks weekly. And then I'm also working on a book, so I'm excited about that because I was an English major. I really did go to school to be a writer. A book is going to be about you? It is, but it's more um, different stories about, it's very work-related and life-related. Oh, and you trying to find a man in between getting these books done in these lists. Finding a man ain't hard. Finding a great man is hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so... <laughs> Anybody can find a man. So, so why, why, why is it... They always clown you on the show. Why don't you have, have, a, have a man? Well, I wouldn't say that I don't. I would say that I don't tell them. Yeah, okay. Because, um... I tell Emmy and Charlamagne, so Charlamagne in particular, they all try to ruin and sabotage my life. Because you know <laughs> so they think it's entertaining. Yeah. So whatever I do until I'm like, probably they're not going to know everything about me until it's like something where I'm probably about to get married soon. But, you know, things are going well for me in my personal life. And I will discuss it more when I feel like, okay, I ain't got to worry about what they're going to... They just love trying to mess stuff up. And I also feel like they don't even really want me to date anybody. Mm -hmm. I feel like they like me better if they can see me as single. And I feel like a lot of the guys around me that I'm cool with are very protective over me. Like, a lot of guys that I have dated would be like, man, it's hard to be around you because... You know, such and such gave me the third degree, or I feel funny vibes from this person. It mm. is true that, like, a lot of guys that I'm cool with, you know, my best friend is, like, the president of Atlantic, Mike Kaiser, and mm -hmm. he does not play. Like, when guys come around, he's like, who is this? How do you know him? And it's just the third degree. Mm -hmm. And even with Charlamagne and Envy, like, they'll joke around and try to and say stuff, but it does make people feel a little uneasy when they... Hey, man, thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. I call her a.k.a. Auntie Yeezy uh, from the Power, Power 1051 Breakfast Club. This is your boy Pooter. This is Talk That Talk on B100. Thank you. For, <laughs> I miss you for the interview. No problem. Thank uh -huh. you.